Hi everyone, my name is Joshua and welcome to Northern Solar. In this video we're going to be looking back at February's figures for 2023 to see how much we generated, what we consumed and how much money we saved um, using our solar panels here in our house in Cheshire. So if, without further ado, we'll jump into the presentation. So as you can see, this is our house here. We have an 8 kilowatt solar edge array with a 6 kilowatt inverter and 13 kilowatt hours of grow watt battery storage. We have 10 panels on the front, which is west facing, and 10 panels on the back of the house, which is east facing. So our solar production for February 2023, you can see it's a real mixed bag. Started off the month really badly, some really low days here, but we did have some pretty spectacular days, one in particular, high of 19.39 kilowatt hours, which in February seems crazy to me, but we had such a good clean sunny day, not, not a single cloud on that day, so really nice uh, high numbers produced there. But the lowest day, 3.25 um, there on the 4th. So yeah, total production of 129.6, so averaging 9.22 kilowatt hours per day. As you can see, yeah, it varies a lot. We get a good week, bad week, then really up and down week day to day towards the end of the month. But you can see a general trend starting to get more and more production through February, which is nice. Um, so this is the graph for our month to month production. So the blue ones are last year when we started in April. And as you can see, we did about twice as much as we did in January. So hopefully maybe March will be somewhere in this region, five or 600 kilowatt hours potentially. And that'll give us a nice uh, curve that we're expecting to see through the year. So moving on, I picked uh, the 22nd of February as a day, a typical day of production um, to show you. As you can see now, we're starting to produce before eight o'clock in the morning, starts to get going. And whereas in January, we were stopping around one kilowatt, maybe around lunchtime. You can see here, if it had been sunny around lunchtime, we'd been definitely would have been over two kilowatts. And as you can see now, we're getting more into the evening, we're getting a bit more production after four o'clock, starting to stretch those days out and get a little bit of production later into the evening. A few cloudy spells on that day, but the 22nd of February um, was a good example of an average day, I think, for, for this time of year. This is our day-to-day -day consumption in February, uh, sorry, the 22nd of February consumption. So as you can see here, the overnight, we've kind of set things slightly differently now, whereas a lot of the time in January and early February we were charging the battery overnight. What I was finding towards the end of February was the battery was still really high, like 70% towards the end of the day. So I turned it off grid charging and decided just to let it hold the charge overnight during the charging window for the car. So when the car charges here at 2.30 in the morning until when it's full about 4.20, um, you see here there's no discharge really from the battery up until the 6.30 when the window closes for our off-peak and we start then using the battery in the morning here. So the car can charge directly from the grid without having to discharge the battery when we set it up to be um, like this at the end of February. Um, that means that when we wake up in the morning we've still got around 65% of the battery left so the car hasn't charged from the battery and we're able to then use the remainder of what's left and then the sun comes up on this day on the 22nd we get a nice sunny day so we've got quite a lot of usage quite a lot of consumption in the house on that day we do um, have a lot of electric heating on at the moment and uh, we're doing renovation work so the gas central heater isn't really doing much because half the house has got holes in it so we're trying to just heat the rooms that we're using so a lot of electrical heating going on and um, maybe even a slow cooker at some point during the day i think but you guys can see the green um spikes behind are the solar on the day so we charge up the battery and by about uh, what would you say about half one two o'clock the battery actually ended up being full again so we were probably exporting to the grid a little bit uh, during this part of the day and then in the evening we start to lose the sunshine so the battery starts to discharge again but again only down to about 70% by the end of the day so again the next night we probably wouldn't have charged the battery from the grid um, I think we managed about four or five days in a row without having to do any overnight grid charging towards the end of February, which was really quite good. I was not expecting to have such good weather. Um, but yeah, we managed to generate enough that we could run the house and everything we were doing all day without having to charge the battery overnight in the off-peak period. 
Um, so this is the same day, 22nd of February. Um, this is just to show you how our optimizers um, coped with the various uh, conditions during the day. Um, if anyone was watching back in December or January, you see we had um, days where we had snow or ice and they covered parts of the panels so you could see some panels weren't generating very much what other panels were. What you can see here, this is uh, sort of turned on its side, so north goes this way. This is the east and this is the west. So we had, it looks like we had a slightly better morning in terms of generation than we did in the afternoon, but each array in general is fairly close. The difference between the panels is, is pretty minimal um, this time of year. There's not much shade around um, and you can just see minor differences, a couple of hundred watt hours here and there um, across the day. So moving on, this is the calculations that we do to look at savings. Uh, total production for the whole month of February, 258 kilowatt hours. Exported to the grid, uh, 53, which again is more than we want to be exporting. We are working on that, but it's sometimes difficult. What seems to happen is the battery gets full and we haven't got anything else to do in the house with the, with the electricity, so it ends up being exported. Um, a couple of times, yeah, we had the battery fully charged and we had a nice sunny day the next day. Um, so yeah, of our 258 that were generated, we were able to consume 205 directly. We used 548 kilowatt hours from the grid. Um, and as I mentioned most months, as you can see, almost all of the grid consumption is during the off-peak um, window, which is charging the car that we have, the Renault Zoe, and also the Evoque Hybrid, and also the grow watt battery overnight. So that 537 kilowatt hours is, is a, is a bulk of our consumption at this time of the year that we've charged into the batteries um, for the car and for the home. <clears throat> the peak consumption again really low, 11 kilowatt hours um, for the whole month. So at the, in terms of solar breakdown for consumption and export, we were able to consume 80% of what we generated which was better than last month I think and uh, only exported 20%. So, and then we look at the total grid usage breakdown. Um, as we're using the grid, um, sorry, for the charging the car and the batteries, 71% of our total usage comes from the grid uh, during the off-peak. 1.41% of the usage is at the grid during peak times. And then 27% is from solar. Um, so yeah, over to the savings. Uh, February, short month, so only £13.25 for a standing charge. Our cost for our, all of that grid usage that we had was £44.78, so it gives you an electricity cost of £58.03. We actually earned £2.17 um, from our exports, which gives us a net electricity cost of £55.86. The non-solar cost here, I've changed my assumptions around this, I'll go into that a little bit more in a second, but we estimate now that that electricity that we used would have cost us £174.45. I've actually backdated these changes to January so that we get a more even amount, um, even look at February and January as we go across the year. And the main reason for our assumption changes is the car, um, the new Renault Zoe that we got uh, in the beginning of January. Um, so if we can see here this, hopefully you can see this one's getting a lot smaller at the moment, but we, here we are in February. So you can see I put a little note to say we've updated the percentages here. So what it is, is you can see these are the numbers that we've got from the previous graphs, 258 produced, exported 53, uh, self-consumption 205, <clears throat> grid consumption 547.7, peak 10.7 and off peak 537.1. So what I'm able to calculate now is um, how much of that went into the car, uh, both cars. So both cars actually used 468 in total, which meant we only put 68.8 into the battery overnight. And you can see compared to January, that's such a huge difference already just because of the extra generation that we've had and the um, ability to store that in the battery we haven't had to charge the battery anywhere near as much overnight. Uh, in January, we were putting a lot more into the battery um, because we were lower every day because we weren't generating anywhere near as much. So nearly double the amount of generation, but less than half the amount of charging of the battery uh, for the grow watt. So overall, our total consumption in the house was lower. 
um, by about 60 something kilowatt hours. Um, and the, what I've done in terms of um, the percentage for the uh, assumptions for what the grid electricity would have cost if we didn't have solar is on the next slide, but I'm just gonna run through these ones to show that's the same percentages we're looking at. Totting up so far, um, yeah, I backdated the saving calculation again to this one. So last month when I did the video, this one was a lot higher, I think, more like 150, but I've changed the assumption. So looking at 120 roughly now, and again this month, another 120. So total savings um, since this system was installed of £1,371.81. So even in the winter, and even though I've updated my um, savings assumptions, I can... Um, say that we've still saved £118.59. The assumptions that I changed were about how much of the grid um, we would use peak versus off peak um, based on the total that we would uh, have used this month. So what I've decided to do is change that um, assumption because when I'm saying our total consumption in the house is 752, if we were buying all of that from the grid, my previous assumption was based around when we only had one hybrid electric car and how much of that we would actually um, be charging into the car and the overnight usage for things like dishwasher and washing machine. So I was estimating that we would be able to use 40% of our electricity off the grid and 60% of that would come on the peak. If you use those percentages on this, uh, this larger number, it ends up looking like you'd save a lot more money but because we're actually charging the two cars now in the off-peak, the off-peak percentage is a lot higher. So I've actually flipped that around. So now if we didn't have any solar but still had the car and we're charging off-peak, now I'm estimating that 40% of the um, usage of our from property would be during the peak and 60% would be off-peak. So it has reduced our assumed savings, but we're still seeing some really high numbers. Sorry if that got a bit technical, it's a bit hard to explain, get it out this time of night. Uh, so yeah, our payback calculations is also been affected. I updated this, I've taken into account a lot more factors now that I have a lot more information. Um, our annual consumption looks like it's gonna be around 6,000. Um, the annual generation looks like it's gonna be closer to 6,500. And what I've done now is I've based the um, non-solar cost on still using the peak and off-peak. Originally I was going on a flat rate because um, this calculation was done before we had the electric cars and everything like that and the solar. So we've now got two electric cars and I'm basing these assumptions um, around that sort of style of usage. So it has actually changed a few things. So we've got the different assumptions here and you can download this spreadsheet. There's a link in the description to have a play around with it as well yourself. I think our initial cost there was £15,215.50 £15, and we're looking like somewhere between seven and eight years to eventually pay that back. Um, yeah, so that's probably a little bit longer than the assumptions last year, but as, as, as I always say, I do keep updating these with when I have more information to give me more up-to-date and accurate um, projections of, of uh, how things are looking and how things are panning out in the long term as well. Obviously, it's pretty hard to be accurate long term. No one really knows what electricity is going to cost this year, let alone in five, six, seven years. So um, at the moment, we're pretty happy with how that's looking. So back to the Renault Zoe, um, new thing in the uh, in the slides again this month. I've just simplified this a little bit. We did 917 miles and the car tells me that was at an average of 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour, which means we used 218 kilowatt hours in, um, in the month for February. I actually had to do some rapid charging on a long distance trip I was doing. So I paid £12.80 to put 21.45 kilowatt hours in in rapid charge. Um, that stung a bit, not gonna lie, when you can get 196.55 kilowatts at home for seven and a half P. Um, you can see our total um, cost for the month for powering the Zoe was 27 pounds and 54 pence. So yeah, slightly higher than last month's two pence a mile, but three pence a mile is still pretty good going. Um, probably won't have to do much rapid charging in March, hopefully, but uh, so far so good. I am hoping to see the sufficiency start creeping up a bit as the weather gets better. It's already slightly higher than it was in January. 
Um, I'll probably do some more slides when I've got a bit more data around the Zoe and um, mileage and efficiency and stuff, but at the moment, just trying to keep it quite simple. Uh, as ever, towards the end of the video, I'd like to give a little plug to see if anyone is interested. If you are looking to switch to Octopus to get make take advantage of their tariffs, if you want to get a £50 credit on your bill, and if you want to give me a £50 credit for doing that, you can use the Octopus link in the description and sign up to their uh, their tariffs. And once you're up and running, you'll get your £50 credit on your bill, and I'll also get a £50 credit. Um, so yeah, just a little plug there for us. I do, we're with Octopus, we've been with them for a while now, really happy with the service, and obviously the tariffs are pretty good, especially if you're looking to do an SEG tariff or a split rate tariff, they do offer generally the best rates around. So that is about it really. Let me switch back to the camera. Yeah, sorry I felt a bit rushed today, it's quite a late one, got a lot going on, got renovations going on in the house. Um, we are going to have some new additions to the home in terms of um, energy saving devices. Uh, we're getting a new boiler with a new hot water tank system fitted. I'll go into more details of that next month once it's all up and running. Um, with that we're looking to install an um, energy diverter, namely the My Energy Eddy, which will then be able to take the excess solar and heat the hot water with it. And as we get into March, April, May and onwards, we will start to see a lot more excess uh, being generated. So hopefully we can keep our gas bill down by heating our hot water um, with excess solar energy. Um, so yeah, overall, as ever, keep answering the question, are solar panels worth it? And I keep having to say, for us, most definitely yes. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone for watching and please do drop me any comments, any questions you have. As ever, you'll see I do like answering the questions and getting into discussions about other people's systems, where they are in the world, north facing, south facing, east facing, west facing. Um, yeah, do hit me up with some comments and until then, uh, yeah, see you. See you next month. Thanks.